He was nicknamed Mr. Recovery because of how hard he recovered from injuries. His coaches and teammates call him Gronkitis because of his infectious, positive attitude, while we all know him as Gronk. In football, we can only be referring to one player, Rob Gronkowski. Although it seems like he's always been Gronk, Rob didn't get the nickname until his rookie year, and it has stuck ever since. Rob is a receiver and a blocker who has set several league records, including being the very first player of his position to lead the NFL in receiving touchdowns. Rob also has the highest career postseason receiving yards by a tight end. Sure, he's America's luckiest player, but when he revealed he has never spent any of his NFL contract money, he got people asking, is he not an average big spender? Or was he not good enough to be paid like every other pro footballer with a thriving career? Gronk played nine seasons for the Patriots before he was traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where he played his final two seasons. Regarded as one of the finest tight ends the game has ever seen, Rob is a four-time Super Bowl champion, a five-time Pro Bowl selection, a first-team All-Pro selection for a record four times, and was selected in the league's 2010s All-Decade team and 100th Anniversary All-Time team. Rob also has the most career postseason receiving touchdowns for a tight end, with 15 to date, and the most combined receptions and receiving yards, 23 and 297, respectively. As if that wasn't enough, Gronk is ranked first in average receiving yards per game, average yards per target, and average touchdowns per game among tight ends. But he didn't receive all of these without having to start somewhere. Born on May 14, 1989 in Amherst, New York, Robert James Gronkowski was raised by Gordon Gronkowski, who is of Polish descent, and his mom, Diane Walters. Rob was born into a family where two things were certain. He was going to be an athlete, and he was going to be tough as nails. Rob was the second youngest of five brothers, and despite his age, they refused to take it easy on each other. As Gordon had said, there were brawls every day, they were in full-on fistfights. Even when they were little, the boys were generally big and all grew to six foot two or taller. In addition to being competitive, Rob's great-grandfather, Ignatius Gronkowski, represented America in the 1924 Summer Olympics in Paris as a cyclist and holds five world records in the sport. Three of his brothers, Dan, Chris, and Glenn, played in the NFL while Gordy Jr., his oldest brother played professional baseball. Gordy also played collegiate football as a lineman for Syracuse University and nearly made the roster of the New Jersey Generals in 1983. But once football was behind him, he took a job as a salesman and began raising a family with his then wife, Diane, who he divorced in 2008. Gordon eventually opened his fitness equipment business, which made him a natural trainer and coach to his boys with the sports of choice, which were baseball and hockey, until he permitted them to take up football once they reached junior high. It was quite a crazy household as you can imagine, Gordon recalled. I had a rule that there was no hitting in the face and in the midsection. We had a great brawl every single day and I had to break somebody up. It was a very competitive household and that's exactly how I was growing up. I always wanted to win and they got that from me. The way Gordon settled disagreements was to put the feuding brothers in different corners of the living room, each armed with a couch pillow. Maybe he should have also instituted time limits because Gronk never knew when enough was enough. Of all the boys, Rob was always picked on because he always wanted to be the wise guy. They would nail him while doing those Charlie horses and things, and when they were through, Rob would go right back after the rest of them. That boy had no fears while growing up, and he still liked that, said Gordon. In high school, Rob played just about anything. He was the first baseman on the baseball team, center on the basketball team, and tight end and defensive end on the football team. But it was in his junior season where his football career took off. Rob recorded 36 receptions for 648 yards, seven touchdowns on offense, and an impressive 73 tackles and six sacks on defense. After that, he was named All-Western New York First Team and All-State Second Team player. Aside from being a multi-talented athlete, Rob was also a member of the National Honor Society, mainly because he was good at math. Going into senior year, the family would relocate to suburban Pittsburgh, where Rob attended Woodland Hills High. However, Rob couldn't play much due to eligibility rules, but he caught eight passes for 152 yards and four touchdowns. 
Rob gained the attention of those at the next level, and in no time, colleges from all over the country begged him to choose them. When you thought Rob would weigh the options and eventually pick the best program for his career, his deal breaker was the Arizona pool party. He simply told his dad, if you ever went to an Arizona pool party, you'll understand. And that's how he ended up at the University of Arizona. As a freshman, he wasted no time with over 500 yards and six touchdowns on only 28 catches. His 18.8 yards per reception average was the team's best and his receiving yards set a new school record for a tight end. The fact that he played for Arizona made it difficult for him to gain national attention, but as a freshman, Rob proved that he was one of a kind. Going into his third year, he was put on the Lombardi Award watch list because many thought he could be one of the big guys in college football. So suffering a back injury was heartbreaking because he was unable to play. However, still having one year of eligibility left the following season, he decided to declare for the NFL draft after less than two years in Arizona. Even though he missed the junior season, Gronk was drafted 42nd overall to New England following a draft day trade with the Oakland Raiders. Rob broke Brandon Manu Maliuna's 2001 mark after he became Arizona's highest drafted tight end. In 2010, he signed his first ever deal with the Patriots, worth $4.4 million, with a $1.76 million signing bonus for four years. Gronk immediately set the ball rolling, and against Pittsburgh in Week 10, he caught three touchdowns from Tom Brady, becoming the first rookie in the history of the Patriots and the youngest rookie in the league to accomplish this feat. But just like any other rookie, Gronk had his moments where his injuries had characterized his 2011 postseason. Rob suffered a high ankle sprain on a tackle by Bernard Pollard, Raven's safety, and the status of his ankle made the headlines in the run-up to Super Bowl 46. A few days after the Super Bowl, it was revealed that he had sprained his ligament and needed surgery. The 2012 season started on a great note as Rob signed a four-year contract extension worth $54 million, the largest ever for an NFL tight end. He started the season with receiving touchdowns in successive games, a 34-13 win over the Titans, and a 20-18 loss to the Cardinals. In 11 games in the season, Gronk had 790 receiving yards and 11 touchdowns, and despite missing some playing time, he earned a Pro Bowl nomination. On the NFL Top 100 Players of 2013, he was ranked 25th by his fellow players. The next couple of seasons saw him living up to expectations despite challenges like injuries and having to be booked for roughness in the 2014 season. Rob was steadily becoming a sensation, especially after he made a comeback after an off-season deal with the Detroit Lions fell through. Rob's biggest moment came when he had a 29-yard catch from Brady with the score tied at three in the fourth quarter, which took the Patriots to the two-yard line and set up the game's only touchdown, with Sonny Michel scoring on a two-yard rush to put the Patriots ahead. Although Gronk announced his retirement in 2019, he would later return to the game, citing mental health as the reason for his initial retirement. The Patriots, which still held Gronk's rights, traded him to the Buccaneers along with a seventh round pick in exchange for a compensatory fourth round pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. This trade reunited him with his buddy Tom Brady, who signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a month before. Considering that Brady was adamant about the team getting Gronk, he was well aware of what the two could do. The following season, he re-signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on a $10 million contract. Though the 2020 season was rare in which Rob played all 16 games, 2021 proved a little more problematic for Gronkowski health-wise. In a game against the Los Angeles Rams, Rob took a hit that led to a punctured lung and multiple rib fractures, which kept him out of action for almost seven weeks. When he returned in Week 11 in a win over the New York Giants, Rob made six receptions on eight targets for 71 yards. The following week in a game against the Indianapolis Colts, Gronk had his first 100-plus yard receiving game, leading all receivers with 123 yards on seven receptions, following that with his third multiple touchdown game for the 2021 season. And against the Atlanta Falcons in Week 13, he netted two end zone visits along with four catches for 58 yards, bringing the Brady-Gronkowski connection to a total of 90 regular season touchdowns. 
This amazing feat saw them placed second on the all-time QB receiver list, behind only Marvin Harrison and Peyton Manning. And on June 21st, 2022, Gronk announced his retirement, and this time, it was final. Despite the countless health issues and lack of four seasons played, Gronkowski won't just be remembered as America's luckiest player, but as the most dominant to ever play the game. Click here for Lamar Jackson's Jack lifestyle, or click here to see the worst NFL contracts out there. We'll catch you in the next one.